This is a tutorial problem on discrete optimization with branch and bound applicable to integer, mixed integer, and mixed integer nonlinear programming. We're going to run through an example problem with a single objective function and two variables with lower and upper bounds. We're going to first of all verify that 0.5 and 0.5 is the optimal solution. I'm going to calculate first of all just the objective of my optimal solution. This is not necessary to verify that it's an optimal point but it's going to be able to give me a lower bound when I start the branch and bound algorithm. So this is uh, the objective is 0.75. Now I need to calculate the gradient of the objective with respect to x and I'm going to do that with respect to x1 and x2. So I'll start with x1 first and just take the partial derivative of the objective with respect to x1 and then plug in the solution, the 0.5, 0.5 for x1 and x2 and then that comes up with 0 for the first gradient and then 0 for the second gradient. I also need to compute the second derivative and confirm that it's positive definite in order to be able to say that it's a minimum. So what I'm going to do is uh, just take the expressions from above and just uh, take uh, the next partial derivative with respect to each of the variables and calculate the matrix. It's going to be a 2 by 2 matrix for the second derivative of my objective with respect to x. Okay, and it's also going to be symmetric. So I'm going to have uh, values that are 10, negative 4, negative 4, and 2. And I can verify that it's positive definite either with eigenvalues, if those are both positive, or I can do it with determinant. If the determinant and all of the principal minors of the determinant are positive, then it's also positive definite. Okay, so I'm going to verify that that is the case. Uh, and uh, I, I showed the eigenvalues and the determinant. Okay, so that's the relaxed solution. Now we're going to go on to the second part of this and consider only integer solutions for this and use the branch and bound. We're going to first of all just look at the exhaustive search, meaning try all of the different points. And there you can see the objective function at all of the different integer values and you, I've put a square around the ones that are optimal. Okay, so there's actually two optimal solutions. Uh, that I had to interrogate uh, this solution at 12 uh, different points and uh, I had two optimal solutions. Okay, now we're going to go with, with branch and bound instead. Okay, so branch and bound, um, we're going to start just with our root node, the 0 0.5, 0 0.5, with an objective of 0 0.75. That's going to be a lower bound as long as this is a convex problem, even if it's a nonlinear problem. Okay, this is my root node. And then I'm going to begin branching. I'm going to first of all just select x as the first variable to branch on. And I'm going to say that x1 is less than or equal to 0. I'm going to solve that one first. So what I'm going to do is draw the line. My solution goes from the optimal okay, to the new point uh, that's, that's uh, less than or equal to 0, and that's x1 equals 0, x2 equals 0. For the greater than branch, I know I'm going to have an objective greater than 0.75. And there's my optimal solution, and it's going to be x1 equals 1, x2 equals 2, and the objective function equals, is equal to 1. There's no additional branching required because both of those branches came up with integer solutions. Okay, so two optimal solutions were found. Now we're going to branch on x2 instead. So let's just say we, we started with x2. Instead, I'm going to draw this as a so it's a horizontal tree instead of a vertical tree. I have my same root node. That's the re, uh, relaxed problem. And uh, what I'm going to do is, is go ahead and compute the first one, which is x2 less than or equal to 0. It came up with one of my optimal solutions. This is an integer solution, and I know this is going to be an upper bound. Any integer solution, the best integer solution is going to be an upper bound. The relaxed solution with the lowest objective is going to be the lower bound. If I have a gap, this is the way the gap is defined. As long as it's less than or equal to tolerance, then we can terminate. Okay, so that can provide some early ter termination criteria if we have a very large problem. Now I'm going to also do it for x2 greater than 1. And I came up with a solution about x1 equals 0.7, x2 equals 1. An objective function approximately equal to a little under 0.8. Okay, now I need to branch again. Uh, with x2, I'm going to have x2 uh, again greater than or equal to 1 and x1 greater than or equal to 1. And then I'm going to have the x2 greater than or equal to 1 and x1 less than or equal to 0. Okay, so I'm going to draw this, this first one and it finds an optimal solution um, 
here, x1 equals 1, x2 equals 1, objective equals 1. Okay, then my next one, I have to continue uh, evaluating this because uh, that potential solution uh, could be better. And I have another branch here, which is x1 equals 0, x2 equals 1, and objective equals 2. This is an integer solution, but it's not optimal. Okay, so there I have my two optimal solutions, and uh, you know it took me a few additional um, a, a few additional evaluations in order to be able to get that, but it's still better than the exhaustive search. Okay, so branch and bound is going to be better than exhaustive search. We're going to now go ahead and program this in a modeling language. This is the AP Monitor modeling language, and I'm going to plug it into a web interface just to verify the solution with a mixed integer nonlinear programming solver. Okay, so I've programmed this with continuous variables. Now I'm going to make it with integer variables instead. Okay, so I just add the int in front of the variable names. I'm going to have an intermediate so I don't have to redefine all those. Just redefine these variables as x1 and x2, but those are still going to be integer values. I'm going to go to apmonitor.com, click solve optimization problems, replace the text box with the one that you see, and then it will solve. This one found the x1 equals 1, x2 equals 2 value. And then I'm going to go back and, and then take a look at the solver as well. You can see that it took the four iterations. And you can see the objective function and the solution time.